They were the higher flyers. They would go up to Ihuo, get the information and bring it back down to us. So that whenever we were moving through uh, the bush and we came across the, the kahu, uh, everybody knew as Māori not to kill them or eat them because it meant that we weren't going to receive the messages about how we were supposed to conduct ourselves as Māori. The kārea on the other hand, or the falcon, that one was okay to um, eat, but the kahu wasn't. And now it's kind of flipped to the other way where the kahu is being killed on roads constantly and the kārea is protected. So from a Māori perspective, it's all upside down. And so the more we run over the, the kahu on the road, the less messages we get from iho, and the less we understand about what it is we're supposed to be doing. Which, in my opinion, is why some of the poor health stats that we're getting now can be connected to kahu's loss of role as we see more of them being killed. The whakapapa is often connected to tāne, as the atua of birds, but it's probably more appropriate to think of tāne te hoka hoka as the older brother, actually, of tāne, who has a more direct connection to manu, and huruhuru manu, even older brother of tāne te hoka hoka, is the closest connection to land birds. There's a number of other higher level whakapapa connections, rather than tāne being seen as the overall atu of all birds. So earlier we talked about the idea of mātaranga for the kahu connecting to the ātea and bringing messages back from Io. The next level down was through whakapapa where we looked at the connections to tāne and the various forms of tāne uh, down to uh, punaweko as the atua of forest birds and down to kahu. And from there we moved into the hua hua tau, which was applications of the thinking and philosophy around where kahu connects into. For example, the idea of being able to take kārearea as food, but to leave kahu to be able to fly up and get information from Eeyore to return to us with. This next level we're looking at is whakapakari tinana, or how we move or emulate the movements of kahu in some of our physical activity training outside. Hariata is going to show us a couple of different variations in taumata on the way up to the most difficult. So starting off with the idea of a small squat, not too deep, but with the idea that she's going to lift her toes up as she gets further down. So lifting her toes and lifting her heels, because the kahu likes to come in and get up on its talons almost and move about. From there what we do is we put one heel down and we're going to try and lift the foot off the ground on the other side and then get her to go up onto her toe on the one leg. And you can see a lot of stability is required, a lot of muscular endurance, coordination of the muscles to fire in the right order. Uh, if you're feeling a bit more game, then your foot can go out in front of you into a pistol squat position and try and go on to the ball of your foot on the back one. The next level on is she's going to grab a hold of one of the rako next to her and she's going to hold the rako with her hands over the top of it. And we're going to repeat the same movements with those arms or hands as wide as we can on top of the rako. And she's going to be trying to lift up her shoulders so that her lats are flared out and we're moving through the same movements. On the next one down, she's gonna bow down and she's gonna try and touch the piece of wood with her foot. Oh, body's going flat out, balancing that one. Beautiful, beautiful. Same thing on the other side. She's up on a ball of her foot on the back foot and you can see that she's trying to touch it up. Huge amount of effort and uh, strength required to do that. 